here we have a visibility lamp which according to the seller on eBay that I got it from is from around the early 1980s um, it was supplied by Bachelor of Ivor as it says on the front there um, I'm going to assume that this logo is the uh, manufacturer name BLW but I am just assuming and I could be assuming wrong <laughs> and the other problem is I can't move it because uh, the base is broken all the clips have broken it is steady burn um, fixed lens, it doesn't rotate, it's a fixed lens as you can see and it's got a um, scotch light type reflective tape on here now that's sort of same sort of stuff you'd get on a high vis co or reflective road sign so I do have the bolt for it, I just can't remember where I've put it and it's either going to be in the bedroom or the kitchen drawer I took the bolts out because I can get more on the shelf because I can get them closer together with the bolts removed right, so I'm going to pop you down again Whoa. preferably without dropping you Now the base actually decides to stay on. Alright. Because I was going to take the battery out of it, but I'll just turn it off. And we'll move on. We'll move on to one that's being a pain in the backside. Now, I've This one is a Nissan mono lamp, and Nissan is a German company, and it's an LED. I think it's one of the only LEDs I've got, aside from the cone lamps I've got, they're LED. Um, this was bought as a new lamp, but the catch had broke, which is why it's not um, clipped down. And I do believe, if I just turn my overhead light on, I do believe it's got a photo cell. Yep, it's gone off. So it's got a photo cell. And it's also got... I don't think my hexagon key is going to fit in those holes, because they're really, really tiny holes on this. You know, really are tamper-proof. You really need something small. If I just flick it up, we've got two switches. This is on off. This one, as you can see, it's clicked outwards. Ugh. Contacts are all greasy. If I click it in, and then we close the lid, we have steady burn. So it's got two options as well. It's uh, it's not my favourite of lamps, but it's definitely not the worst I've got either. Uh, it does have a hook there. It's not a bad little lamp, to be honest. Yeah, I've got one of these adapters in there. <laughs> so I could set four lamps up and uh, get things done a little bit quicker. Just pop you there while I uh, put this on the floor. I did get that cheaper, by the way, because that catch was broken. Right, I'm going to bring up one of my favourites now. And just turn it on. I think I've got to go from there. Here we go. This is made by Tildorn, but I can't find a model number or name on it. Um, I do know, just because I've seen them online, when I've googled Tildorn, they did them in various coloured lenses, you can get red, blue, green, and I think they even did a white. Um, Built-in handle, and I remember back in the 90s, the electricity company back then, for this area, were using these lamps. Um, I got three of these in total, plus 
a Nissan lamp, which I'll get onto in a little bit. From a retired police officer. Can't remember what I paid for all four now, but um, I've still got the other one of these. I sold one on eBay because two worked, one was broken, so I kept the broken one as a spare, kept a working one, and sold a working one. And I can't even remember how much I sold that for. It's got the 360 lens on it, you know. Well, 360, I mean, you can turn it 360. But like I said, it's a bugger to do it on this table one handed. <laughs> Come on. There we go. It's got the reflect around there as per, well, I presume EU regulations. And a little slide switch. I think that's what broke on the um, lamp I've got. I can't remember. So, I'm just going to pop you down again. While I swap for the next one. And I'll go and get the um, other Nissan lamp in a minute. Because that's quite an interesting one. Ooh, that's rather dim. I think that battery's dying. It's had a lot of use. Yeah, so it's dim just because I've got a crappy battery in that one. <laughs> anyway, this is made by Renix Manufacturing Limited, or MFG for short. And... Unlike a lot of lamps over here that either have the reflector built around the lens or a bit of reflective tape on them, this has actually got a big reflector built into the bodywork here. And uh, a photo I took of this to put on a Facebook group made it look like this lens was angled, but it's not. It's just got a bit of a recess there. It's the same both sides. It's got a big off there and a big on on the other side so you know which one's which. But yeah, This is made in Dublin, Ireland and I've only ever seen one more of these on eBay. It's just like that visibility one. They're quite rare. Uh, since I've been looking on eBay over the years for lamps, I've only ever seen three more visibility lamps. These ones pop up on eBay. There's one on there at the moment. But um, I've only ever seen one other one of these and I've got one of them that I've seen so. <laughs> right. I do like the design of this one though. It's quite an unusual uh, boxy design. Fixed lens. So it would actually be ideal for scaffolding. Because you don't really need a 360 lens up on scaffolding, you know. It just bolts up like that on the scaffolding, so. Although nowadays they've got those um, LED type lights now, haven't they? Which I don't think are as visible, to be honest. I don't like them. Right. So I'm just going to put you on there while I reach for the um, fifth one. And then I've got three more to do after this one. Now, this one is half a lamp. <laughs> um, and this one is actually a strobe. And you're probably thinking, how have I got that working when I've only got half the box here? See? Well, I cheated. I connected one of these little 9 volt batteries to it. <laughs> Um, yeah, this came with the Tildorms I got off that retired copper. Nice big handle. It is a Nissan. I don't know how old it is. And I know the Dorman highlights came with an actual strobe version as well. And you can get the Unilamp as a strobe version as well. I don't know if you can hear it, but it does make that high-pitched whine. I did have to repair it as well. It wasn't just a case of adding a 9 volt battery clip. The button had broken. It was a push button like this on top of it, but the old one had broken. So I found a used one up from my pile of bits and bobs and uh, replaced it. Now it doesn't want to come out either. 
That bottom has been falling out for ages, and just because I want to show you on the inside, it doesn't want to fall out, does it? <laughs> That's Murphy's Law. Right. But, uh, we've got to turn the light on for this as well. There we go. That's inside. That lends you a little Zenon strobe. I think they're Zenon. I can't remember. Here's my new switch. I just connected onto the old wires to lengthen, whoops, lengthen them a little bit. Yeah, I'm not going to go putting my fingers on the end of that ca capacitor either. <laughs> yeah, that would be asking for a big shock. A very big electric shock. Because I don't think that's got a... No, it hasn't. It hasn't got a bleed resistor on it. So, yeah, that's probably still charged. So I ain't touching that. No way, no how. <laughs> right, so I've got... Three more lamps to do, so I'm going to set up a battery in each of those, and um, I'll return in a few seconds. Okay, so I'm going to start with the Permic this time, and uh, I don't remember seeing many of these about back in the day, but um, I bought a set of four of these from an eBay seller and sold off the other three, because I didn't think I really needed four. Um, I haven't seen many on there since. This has got the uh, reflective tape on both sides. Quite a small lens, but pretty damn visible. And it's also got one of these sort of little lugs on either side that you can tie a string to, to hang it up. And according to the seller, they were bought new and just never used, so... Allegedly, any marks on it is just from storage. It is quite a nice looking... Well, it's an unusual lamp. And they... I have seen one on eBay, but he wanted too much for it, in my opinion. That did actually have a strap on it. But like I said, I just felt he wanted uh, far too much for it. I mean, I didn't pay what he wanted for all four. So, where's my button? Down there, there we go. That's on top of it. I hate it when they fall apart like that. Right. That's another one, ready to go on the shelf. I'm saving the best one to last, by the way. So, the next one is my third and final Nissan lamp, and it's the Kony lamp. Uh, again, as it says, it sits on a cone, it's got a little rubber ring in there for it to sit on. And just like the doorman, when it goes on the cone, it's got that little switch there that activates and that uh, in turn, whoops, that in turn activates the lamp. I do think these Nissan ones have got a slightly better, clearer lens. I might have to do a comparison one day. Um, we've got the built in reflector, nice big handle. The synchro ones, because they do a synchro version of this, just like they do with the cone lamps. It's got, I know on the back, it's just got two little black sensors in there, and I think it's got one on the front somewhere as well, just like the doorman. But, um, I do have one, but apart from the sensors, they're exactly the bloody same. So, that's that one. Now, I couldn't resist this one when I saw it, and I've only ever seen one more on eBay. Ugh. That is quite a big lamp. <laughs> Not just height-wise, width-wise as well. Now, I haven't got the correct battery for this, and it does require a very expensive battery, but it will run from one of these with a slight modification, which I've done. It's got the protective cage. This is made by... Where's the label? The Wolf Safety Lamp Company Limited. 
Saxon Road Works, Sheffield, England. Hazard warning light type HFX. Warning, do not open or exchange battery in hazardous areas. Static hazard, clean only with damp cloth. Do not use solvents. This is designed for, well as I said, hazardous environments such as quarries, mines, anywhere there could be explosive gases. Um, I haven't got the bolt in, so what I'm going to do switch the overhead light on and I'm going to um, separate both halves so I'll just uh, show you the inside where? <laughs> is that what that is? Well, as you can see in here there's the bulb, the usual um, 5 volt bulb and I've just got the two wires going straight to a 6 volt battery but what I'm going to do, I'm going to change these for a couple of crocodile or add a couple of crocodile clips on there so I can clip them to a battery a lot easier um, I was just reading a sticker over here and it says something about ceramic Five amp ceramic fuse, which is in it says it's in here somewhere. I think that's the circuit board there that's potted to prevent, you know, sparks. All these connections, you see, they've got the extra sleeving all on here to prevent sparks. It's got a heck of a robust case. Yeah, somewhere in here, I think it's this. That's the fuse hidden in there. Yeah, it is. I can see it. There's the fuse holder. I never noticed that. It's, uh, looks like it's tied in. So, yeah, the circuitry is actually in this little cylinder here, all potted in. So, uh, if anything went on that, you're stuffed. You'd have to either make your own circuit up or just have it as a static lamp because this does flash. Which uh, I haven't actually shown you it flashing yet, have I? So if I uh, click the switch, which I can't, I'll... I've lost my hexagon key. What have I done with it? I'll use that instead. That'll work. Should work. Oh, come on. Stop being a mean. Right. It's quite a nice lamp, this one. And of course, it wasn't cheap to get. It's probably one of the more expensive lamps I've bought. But I think it was worth it. And I think, that apart from my two paraffin lamps, which I might do a separate video on those later, that is it. That is my current collection. So I hope you enjoyed the series of three videos. And uh, until next time, I'll talk to you again soon. Bye! Hi guys, this is the last instalment of the um, videos I've been doing on my barricade lamps road lamps as we call them here um, this one's just going to be misc lights miscellaneous lights um, pretty much because Dorman and JSP were the two big providers here which is why I've got so many of them and why there is so many designs um, but I'm going to start off with my American lamps and I've got three of them I'm going to start with this one which is an Emco light model number 400 and it's got lots of other numbers and things written on there red lens the red lens does not rotate it's actually fixed in place it would rotate if you undid these screws it probably will rotate anyway I've never tried it but I think it's just because of these two screws here are clamping the lenses together which is why it won't rotate right it's a push button switch and again this has got two different modes 
this has got fucking wiggler. Where have I got to go? There we go. I've got to angle the hexagon. Hexagon key? The hexagon key. I'm using one of these. I've got to angle it upwards. So that's the flash mode. And then let's get it in the hole and angle it up a little bit. And we click it again, it goes off. And if we click it again, we can activate steady burn. And uh on a Facebook group I recently joined, um, someone did point out that many American lights don't have a carry handle. And they are absolutely right. I don't think, even on YouTube videos, I don't think I've ever seen one with a carry handle. I've only got the fixing bolts. Right, should turn that off. Pull that out. This one's a little bit grubby. Showing quite a few signs of wear, but it's not in bad condition. Got one of those bolts I think go with this one. I can't remember. Three lamps, two bolts. Two bolts are exactly the same. I'm going to put you there for a moment while I bring up the next lamp. I was doing this at random. Here we have a Colt. And it's actually got Hopedale MA on it. Um, I haven't done research on where Hopedale is, but I do believe MA is the initials for Massachusetts. Any American viewers, please correct me if I've got that wrong. Um, it's also got in case written on the top there as well, the lights washing it out. Um, pretty much the same style lens as my red one. The reflector around the edge and the. Easily. Pretty much, <laughs> it is almost identical. So I need two hands to turn this one on. So I'm just going to put it down on the tape over there for a minute. Let's give that a click. There we go. I might just turn my overhead lamp off so it shows better. Oh, that's better. Well, I might actually get away with that light off, to be honest. Here we go. I do like the body design on this one. I wouldn't mind getting some um, vintage American ones and Australian ones. But not only do they cost a fair bit of cash, because I'd have to import them to the UK, they're going to cost a fair bit of cash for postage as well. <laughs> right. Here's the third one. I'm going to have it that way around. This one is the Cortina Safety Products Group Strato Light. I actually do like. I'm not keen on the body shape of this one and the, all these weird lines they've got in it. Um, I think I'd like it better if they just did away with all these lines. I'm not sure what they're for, if they're for anything. <laughs> but, um, this has actually got three features on it. It's got photo cell, which um, with a bit of wiggling I should be able to get my overhead light there to trigger the photo cell. But it's got, if I click the switch once, we've got steady burn. And that is actually quite a bright, clear lens. That's a good lens. And if I click it again, it has flash mode. If I turn the overhead lamp on, is it going to trigger it? I was playing with this earlier and I had to get the light in just the right spot for that to trigger it. And round the right way. It's not going to do it now, is it? <laughs> there we go, I got it. <laughs> just to prove it has got the um, photo cell in it. Okay. So that covers all three American lamps, so I'm just going to turn the camera off while I get another three ready.